name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the notification, and give the video a thumbs up or thumbs down. I apologize, my dog is being super needy today and won't let me put him down until he starts shrieking and crying and acting like a baby. So he might be here for some of it. Yeah, so I managed to attempt to read 27 books, and I DNF'd three, I think? I don't know. I'll point them out as I'm kind of going through this thing. What is it? Oh my gosh. He just wants screen time, I bet. That's what he wants. So the first book that I attempted to read this month was Slight by Jennifer Somersby. I actually ended up DNFing this one. Then I read The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. Parsnips Buttered by Joe Lysett, Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller, the second book in the Daughter of the Pirate King duology, Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend, Arlo Finch in the Valley of Fire by John August, Daughters of the Storm by Kim Wilkins, The Tangled Lands by Paolo Bac Bacigalupi, I don't know if I said that right, and Tobias Buchel, Cinder by Marissa Meyer, the first book in the Lunar Chronicles, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by Jim K. and J.K. Rowling, The Illustrated Editions. The Beauty of Darkness by Mary Pearson, the third and final book in The Remnant Chronicles. Blood Rose Rebellion by Rosalind Skye, I want to say the author's name is. The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead. Society of Wishes by Elise Kovat and Lynn Larsh. Speak Easy by Alyssa Smith. I actually DNF'd this one. Gemini by Jay, Co Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This is the second book in the Illuminate Files series, and it was a reread. If I put you down, will you not cry? Let's see how long that lasts for. Enter Three Witches by Enter Three Witches by Carolyn Cooney. A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. The second and third book in the Akatar series. And The Marvelous Adventures of Gwendolyn Gray by B. A. Williamson. Zenith by Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings. I DNF this one. Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare, Scarlet by Marissa Meyer, the second book in the Lunar Chronicles series, Gunslinger Girl by Lindsay Ellie, Honor Among Thieves by Rachel Kane and Anna Guir, Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gabaldon, the second book in the Outlander, I don't even know how long this series has gotten, but it's the second of like nine or so now, I don't know. And lastly, I read The Sign of the Four, part of the Sherlock Holmes Complete Anthology. Now, when I removed all of the rereads that I did for books that I knew I already love, I feel like I read a good number of books this month. However, quality-wise, I had a lot of mediocre and meh books. I don't know if it was just my reading mood or they all just happened to fall in the same month or so that I was reading them, but um, I didn't love some of these books. A good actual percentage of them were just very mediocre and okay, but knowing that, removing those books that I was like very mediocre and that I've already reread, re I was able to pretty easily whittle down my favorite book of the month. And well, actually there are two of them, just because they're very different in kind of their own realms and genres. So the first one is Parsnips Buttered by Joe Lysette. This book actually made me cry laughing. Comedy is very difficult to come across in books. And he's already a comedian that I loved and knew I was going to likely enjoy the comedy style of. And I knew his like gimmicks of sending passive aggressive customer service emails to people. But it's just so funny all wrapped up into one like, I don't know, 200 ish baby page book of just him time after time telling funny stories. And I absolutely loved it. And I hope he releases more books in the future when he does more funny things like that, because I'm all for that. And my other favorite book of the month was Gunslinger Girl by Lindsay Ellie. Part of this was just because it was most surprising, but I had other books in my most surprising one. And I feel like that's one I want to keep like very exclusively to one book if I can. So I wanted to give kind of a nod to this one. I think I ended up giving it like a four to five stars. I didn't love the romance the way it was written throughout. However, I loved the overall feel, the setting, giving that Western setting without kind of including the things that I don't really like in Westerns. I find sometimes Westerns can be quite boring. I find a lot of the women are very, always written very timidly and weak. And I don't love that. So I really, really like that they took a lot of like the good parts or the parts of fantasy plots that I really enjoy and just put it in this different setting. And it's got a bit of a dystopian feel too. So it's kind of, you know, it's Western without being Western. It's just got a different hint and setting and kind of freshens up a plot that has been kind of done not to death, but done an awful lot in like dark fantasy worlds where there's a monarch and all that kind of stuff. I really enjoyed how 
the ending kind of really included every character, which I felt overwhelming a little bit as a reader because I kept mixing up names, but that's on me. I actually kind of want to reread this so I can like make sure I understand who did what in the end, because I find a lot of the times when books end, especially standalones, they end and then you like they you don't get an ending to like half of the characters at the bare minimum and you're like, well that was kind of lazy. You could have added an extra chapter on or just don't include them at all. But I didn't find that with this book. I feel like everyone was pretty well represented in the ending kind of battle and there was lots of twists and turns going on in it. And I really liked how each character, like a lot of the main characters, they were pretty distinctively different. It was the names that kind of messed me up and I'm really bad with names. But yeah, overall, really, really enjoyed this one. Most surprising book of this month was Society of Wishes by Elise Kova and Lynn Larch. I am an absolute massive fan of Elise Kova. I love all her writing. I I think I'm almost done the, the Air Awakens series. I think I have book four and five to go. And she's writing a prequel series. I follow her really actively. She's an auto by author for me. And I love her cover designs. Like, she did this one herself. I really, really like the Air Awakens series. And then I love the concept of this, of Hacker for Hire, having a secret society, having powers and all that kind of stuff, dystopian future, the United States is cut up in different sectors. But this book fell really, really flat for me, and I was so, so surprised. Normally, at least COVID just kind of draws me in and sucks me in and gets me everywhere that I know that she's intending to take me. I don't know if it was because this is a co-author and their writing just didn't jive with me, or just that it was just not written well enough. I don't know. I do think there may have been some overall issues with the writing, period, though. There were, I mean, one of the main characters' name is Snow, and the copy I have, his name is Smo. I've seen it, I saw it at least once in my copy. And then on kind of on top of that, there were a lot of very weird sentence structures that made it very difficult to keep the flow of the book going. And I know she did make some edits since then to the copy, but I mean, this is the one that I got and read, and I wasn't wasn't super excited about it when I got to the end. I was actually quite disappointed. So yeah. I'll still follow her next book series though. Don't you worry. Now, worst book of the month is kind of a weird title or weird kind of classification this month, just because there weren't really many like awful books. And that in mind, I don't include DNFs because I did not finish the book. And I mean, they're in a classification system of their own, but I just don't feel like it's fair to hate a book that I didn't actually finish on. So with that in mind, I ended up taking Daughters of the Storm by Kim Wilkins. This one's, like I said, kind of weird though. There were parts of this that I loved. I love the geopolitics of it. I love the cover of this. I like that they fixed up because I've seen the Australia cover. This was released a couple years ago in Australia and that book cover is awful. I would never ever pick a book up with that cover. I like the setup and like the mystery around it and the magic going on and everything and you kind of just dip your toes because there are so many perspectives you could ju you just 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 start kind of getting a feel of everyone however I really really hated some of the main characters that I don't think I was supposed to hate <laughs> one of the sisters specifically is extremely extremely selfish and honestly just so stupid and the only sister with any like semblance of a brain and logic is the girl that is constantly kind of like back talked and talked behind her back by her sisters by the community and like I get just because there's a power dynamic the people that serve under her are not necessarily going to say always good things about her and she'll have enemies but her sisters who are just very vicious about her because she is literally saying just very basic things like no you shouldn't cheat on your husband with your husband's cousin or a nephew that's not good that's not gonna end well and Oh. Maybe I'll change my tune whenever what happens in the next book happens in the next book. I don't know. But I just don't know. <laughs> there are parts of it that I definitely would change. And I don't know. Like, it's just very hard. But this, that being said, I probably will reread this and I will definitely continue on the series. And maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just, I listened to part by audiobook. So maybe it was the audiobooks as like the narrator's voice that I didn't like or something like that. I don't know. I'll try it again in the future, closer to whenever the sequel comes out. And I really hope we get more of our main sister. I think her name is Bluebell is her name. Yeah, Bluebell. Bluebell for sure. Definitely team Bluebell. And I hope, or I hope the other kids change their tune because some of them are just like straight up stupid. Like, <laughs> really really stupid human beings as always i have some lessons from this month some of them are sarcastic some of them are legitimate they tend to just be mostly sarcastic though daughter of the siren queen confirmed for me that i would for sure want to be a pirate not a siren i don't know why specifically or no that's not true every time i think about being a siren i think of my hair being in the ocean and the color dye that i put in my hair not being able to be retained because of the water i, I know that's not even remotely a legitimate reason but i don't know i just 
I don't know, I read this book and then I saw a video this month about like Anne Bonnie and I just don't know why, but I'm just, the pirate thing is, it's for me. I don't, not the sirening, no, not so much. No. Also, I'd be super down, Trisha Levenseller in the off case that you watch this, to read a book or a TV sitcom where the entire premise is Alosa and Reedan living in a cramped New York City style apartment, okay? Just saying, think of How I Met Your Mother, but with a better ending and, you know, take the crew and Put them in the apartment, too. I'd be so for that. Parsnips Buttered by Joe Lysa reminded me that I need to upgrade my customer service complaining skills. I mean, he's not lazy. And I feel like that when I read this book, I realized just how lazy it was to just put a basic review. No, mess with them. Mess with them. It's hilarious. Arlo Finch in the Valley of Fire made me realize how, as a kid, I was very uncreative, apparently. This book has a very similar structure to my childhood. I used to live in a house when I was a kid that bordered on this massive, massive, just hundreds and thousands of acres of farmland because it was just farmland surrounding my town. And I never once thought of any of this stuff as a kid. I just went into the forest and looked for weird frogs or something like that. I don't know why. I wish, I'm honestly kind of disappointed in young Sam. Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow, my reread just reminded me, and in perfect timing. Toys R Us is now out of business in the US. In Canada, we still have them apparently, but it's out of business in the US. We need, as human society, to pool all of our money and make a franchise called Cauldrons R Us. I don't know what they're going to sell. I don't know that they will be successful, but I feel like we need to. It's just what the world needs. Also, the entrance should require you to go down into the sewer drains. No walking in like normal human beings like a Walmart. You have to go down, down storm drains. And that way. Among many things this month, Daughters of the Storm made me, re almost remind me that if my spouse ever tries to kill me, even if by accident, you shouldn't forgive them. It's just generally a recipe for disaster and family drama. Daughters of the Storm also made it so that I need to remind people in a separate memo that you don't just automatically get pregnant by hooking up with someone and thinking, I hope I get pregnant. That's not how that works whatsoever. The Queen's Rising made me realize that I need to send a memo to authors in the publishing industry that you having the main character automatically in a romance with her kind of confusingly older teacher does not automatically make you Ezra and Arya from Pretty Little Liars TV show. You gotta work at it and convince me that it's not creepy, or he's gotta be at least super hot, like Ian Harding hot or something, because... When it comes to Cinder and Scarlet, the month of March made me super, super excited and hyped for the fact that hopefully this series will be adapted. I know it was optioned off quite a few years ago, but nothing's happened. And then I saw Ready Player One, and my excitement suddenly very, very quickly pulled and turned like a total 360 and went to fear because, oh dear God, they're going to mess with this series and ruin it. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Askman just reminded me that Snape is a garbage human being, and I will go to my grave arguing that and with people who think, Otherwise, I don't even know what to do, to do with you. He's a horrible human being in this book. He's a total douche, and I'm so team Neville and supporting Neville. Just, I mean, he's a sociopath. He tries to, like, kill... He takes such joy out of this, and him being in love with Lily in the back in the past just because she was nice to him does not justify any of the weird crap that he does or the whole, like, triple agenting thing that he does. He's just a really, really bad human being who happens to do some not horrible things in this series. And I, I will rant for forever about this. Actually, it's an idea for a future video. The Beauty of Darkness just, like, pumped me up even more for Dance of Thieves. It's coming out so soon. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited for this world to continue. Blood Rose Rebellion, The Glittering Court, and Daughters of the Storm also reminded me this month that I need to send a third memo to publishers and authors, reminding them that when you don't know what to do with characters, you don't automatically have to make them in a romantic relationship. In fact, as readers, we're pretty good at spotting when that happens because you don't know what else to do with them. So please stop it. Just make them friends. It's okay. People of the opposite sex can be just friends without any romantic entanglements. And please think about that in your future writing. Gemina just reaffirmed my belief after this month that I will no longer be able to enjoy space operas after this series. I know it's going to ruin me, and I don't know I will by de facto just compare every single book set in space now to this series and know that it's not going to be as good. I just... So thanks, Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. Thanks a lot.
And that point was proven by Honor Among Thieves immediately after. Conveniently, the same month that I reread A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin, there's an official release by J Mass and the production company that Akatar is getting adapted. I think into a film series, I'm not totally sure. Throne of Glass was originally said to have been uh, being adapted into a TV show by Hulu, and they said it was coming out in 2018, but we've not heard anything since that announcement happened, and they haven't even cast people, so I've just assumed they've abandoned that series as a TV show. So I got excited for this, and then three days later, I think, I went and saw Ready Player One, and my excitement turned very quickly, once again, into straight-up fear. Because I don't know that, A, you're going to be able to get a human being as good as Reese. But two, Hollywood tends to remove those building scenes that technically nothing happens in, but it really is detrimental to the story and character development. And I just know that this story is going to, like, lose all of its meaning and sense when they do that. So, I don't know. Essentially, this is a big middle finger to Hollywood video, because y'all are ruining things. Zenith taught me that all of the criticism of this book on YouTube and Goodreads is actually quite founded because this book was all oh, problems. The Marvelous Adventures of Gwendolyn Gray has made me realize that I think middle grade quality of stories and creativity has actually gotten better than YA. Gunslinger Girl was basically just my monthly reminder that in basically any dystopian future or historical past, I would have been killed very quickly on in this story because I have a big mouth and I'm a female and I would not be able to keep my mouth shut. So so those are all of the books that I read this month. Let me know in the comments section down below what you read this month and if you've read any of these and love them or hate them. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of the books to their Goodreads pages as well as link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.